Welcome to the shop, everyone, on part 17 of the Chevy 454 Big Block Performance Build. I'm going to be going over the engine induction system I chose for this build. Now, early on in this build, this engine was going to go in a Corvette, and they struggle with hood clearance. So, some of these parts I bought, I might not have if I was going into a car to have more hood clearance. But, like this air cleaner here, it's advertised as an open air Corvette air cleaner, maybe for like the L88 uh, Corvettes. But uh, for the price, I, mean, I think it was like $89 on eBay, and the gauge steel it's made out of is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice piece. And look at that, the entranceway going into the carburetor, the curve that they gave that. You know, that is one of the best looking air cleaner lids I've actually seen. And so I'm, I'm very pleased with, you know, the $89 air cleaner I bought for. And on a carburetor itself, I was able to put it in my milling machine and machine those slots right there. See those slots right there? And that keeps the air cleaner lid clocked correctly. So those two indentions you see that are over the fuel, I don't know, the fuel, fuel float adjustments of the Holly. So that keeps that all in line. And also it was advertised that like it wouldn't fit. I, I forget exactly how they worded it, like the dual line coming out of a holly. So I was able to remove that pipe and I found a freeze plug. And I just uh, put that in place of where that bigger hose came out of the air cleaner lid. All right, so that gets us to the carburetor I chose for it. It's a Holley 4150 HP 1000 CFM carburetor. Now, this was another eBay item that I bought. It was one of the, it was like returned and then Holley, you know, checks them out, does any repairs and then resells them at a reduced price. And I think uh, new from Summit, these were around $855, so I was able to acquire it a uh, good bit cheaper than the full purchase price. Now the 1000 CFM was a little bit big as far as I was concerned but you know they advertised the Ventura throat and the throttle blades the same as the 850. So the contour of the air hat where the air comes in and the throttle blades that you're using has to be what picks up the CFM on it and that doesn't hurt the booster signal. And also, since I do modifications, I took the boosters out myself and machined a step in it. Then I sharpened that inside edge, not the outside, the inside, as sharp as I could get it. And that's supposed to pick up, help pick up a stronger booster signal too. So anyways, I was hoping with those modifications I did to it, that it would, you know, turn out to be a good carburetor for that engine. And I also decided that if, for some reason, it doesn't work out, I could always take those, uh, the boosters out and put some annual annual I can't say it right boosters in there should, that would probably fix the problem then also this uh, HVH super sucker they're advertised to help give the carburetor a stronger signal as well now the reasoning for that I believe is you know when you have those four holes in the carburetor and you can picture like columns of air flowing through there you have that dead area in between the butterflies. And what the super sucker's trying to do is fill that void area up to where you don't get like, the best I can say is like vortexes spinning in there because if you have a low pressure point, it doesn't want to stay low pressure. So it's drawing things into it to try to make it the same pressure as everything else. So, if I hadn't been fighting for hood clearance issues, I probably would have went with a one inch one instead of this half inch one. Um, and I think it was advertised as about a hundred and thirty something dollar part. And there's no guarantee it'll work. It's just something I bought that, uh, something to try out. And I, I just like the way it contours around the carburetor so well. You can see the steps and the ventures down there. Alright, 
So, the next thing on the list was what kind of intake did I want for this engine? And, you know, originally I was probably going to go with some kind of a Victor Junior single plane. But over time, I decided I'd rather have a good horsepower average and torque average than, you know, a peak number. And also, a lot of the tests that I saw or read about, you know, they all had pretty good things to say about these performer air RPM air gap intakes. So they're sort of the best of both worlds, and that's why I ended up going with it. Now you can see like the water is, you know, run front to back as far as you can draw water off that back port to the front port. Uh, they're, they're built very sturdy and sometimes when I pick it up I think, man this thing is heavy. You wonder why they, you know, build them so heavy. But also I think it's also the handle. Any kind of backfire that could happen in them. So the next thing we got to do is get that intake to flow nicely into these AFR 265 heads we bought. So in an upcoming video I'm gonna show you guys how I port match the intake to the heads. Now you can see with that AFR gasket how well it fits the ports of the head itself. And, and you, you can see a little bit of margin around there where you can see some of the aluminum but I probably won't touch the heads I'll probably just leave them as they are now the intake itself the ports going into it I might make them you know maybe a, a 16th smaller than what those parts are entering into those ports so when we put that intake gasket on the performer RPM intake we can see the mismatch and also, I don't want to, like, I could stick the intake gasket on there now just like this and use some blue one and scribe out what I see. But I, I think I want to wait and see how far down the intake sits on the engine itself before I decide how to port the intake. So you have a good bit of material and also you know the gasket match you actually need to go up in the port at least uh, you know inch and a half two inches where it necks down so as you can see up in the port there's like a casting parting line I'll clean all that up and then I'll slowly open it up probably about an inch and a half two inches in there out to where the gasket is but if you really look at the intake, you know, the casting quality is really high. You know, that's not a bad looking runner, you know, from the factory. At least what I have seen in the past. You know, the casting process that these companies have these days is so much superior to how it used to be years ago. Alright, so after I get the cylinder heads put on the engine, uh, I'm going to set the intake on there and see you know how far it sits down on the heads then also which i doubt i'll have to you know mill the intake to get it to fit how i like it uh then i'll be better to scribe the ports where they'll line up correctly with uh, the heads themselves so here are some of the tools i'm going to use to do that job uh, a lot of the tools i got from harbor freight uh, scribe measuring parts there you know I, that's not from harbor freight but like these sanding rolls i got those from harbor freight uh both these die grinders i think came from harbor freight and i know the cheap one did and that cheap one i'm telling you guys that's a pretty good little grinder i have really liked that uh there's some of the carbide bits some of the measuring tools that i'll be using and some of the bluing and the scribe so those are the tools I'm going to be using to get this intake manifold ports to line up perfectly with the ports of the AFR heads. So that's the induction system on this 454 big block. As always we hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys did please hit that like, subscribe if you'd like to, uh, notifications, share it, do all those things. Help us keep the lights on here at Myers Metalworks and as always Thanks so much for watching guys, and we hope to see y'all on the next video.